everybody. I'm Dr. Jordan Leisure. I'm the owner and physician of North Shore Proactive Health, a state-of-the-art wellness clinic in the northern Chicago suburbs. Do not be alarmed. I put a peel on my face, hence the reason it should be done by a professional. But in all reality, everything is fine and I will be hopefully looking marvelous in about three days. So I hope that you were able to tune in this week and take a look at some of my colleagues' recommendations and some of what they have been experiencing themselves, as well as seeing in practice the recommendations that they have made to patients, as well as what they're implementing for their own families, and be able to put some of that into practice for yourself. Tonight, I hope that we have a handful of patients that are able to watch clients, people that are able to watch live because we are going to get really real tonight and talk about lifestyle modifications and what you should expect from yourself, what you can expect, and how long it takes to implement a change. So as you're hopping in, you know, say hello, let's talk about what's going on. It is literally raining for like the 10th day in a row in Chicago. So if you weren't depressed before, if you were handling um, stay at home pretty well, if you're feeling depressed right now, um, rightfully so, because this is just BS. Like, like I'm so over it. We, it's almost like you're, um, hi Kelly, thanks for tuning in. It's almost like you're like in quicksand, you know, and you finally get a handle and you're crawling out. And then all of a sudden, like shit's just piled right on top of you again. That's kind of what's going on here in Chicago. So if you're somewhere and it's nice and it's sunny, enjoy that. And please post in the group and share some positive messages because we are just hurting here in Chicago. Um, so we're going to talk tonight. Uh, I had a, a client that had a really great suggestion for live. So that's where we're going tonight. We're going to talk about behavioral change. So let's hop right in. Again, if you're watching the replay, say hello. Let us know when you're watching. If you're watching the live, please comment. I've got my, my Facebook open on my computer so that we can have a little bit of interactions here. Um, so for those of you that don't know, um, I run a brick and mortar clinic in Libertyville in the northern Chicago suburbs. And in addition, obviously, I'm a chiropractor by training and my functional medicine certification came, um, it started about five years into practice. So I've been working on lifestyle modifications as a certified practitioner um, for about 10 years. But I have to tell you, you know, what I teach people is not rocket science, you know, to eat the apple instead of the donut or to go outside and um, take five deep breaths. You know, I'm sure that everybody on here doesn't need to pay a doctor to tell them that. Now, where the expertise and the implementation comes in is when individuals are suffering with different illnesses and they either need real specific modifications because the treatment of symptomatology isn't working or they need someone to hold them accountable. So that's where some of this comes in. Now, over the last few weeks, I have been very reserved in the information that I have offered. Um, not so much in this group, but more in, in other Facebook groups, in some of the moms, local moms groups. Hi, Lizzie, thanks for tuning in. Um, and part of the reason for that is because I do own a brick and mortar clinic. It is important that I maintain um, more of a neutral reputation on social media but I actually shared what I felt was a very benign recommendation um, in one of the mom's groups because someone had voiced their concern that Chicago is finally, and they are behind everyone else in the, not only the country, but in the world as far as opening up um, in the United States. For those of you that don't know, Illinois was the first state to completely lock down and we are the last to start to open. And there are still individuals that are quite scared by that opening. Um, even though, again, if you're in the northern suburbs, you can drive half an hour to Wisconsin. And Wisconsin is kind of uh, freely open. Um, and, if, and here's another thing that's kind of funny. I have a friend that's planning a vacation. And hey, Christy, thanks for tuning in. If you fly out of Chicago, 
you have to self quarantine for two weeks to her vacation destination. However, if you fly out of Milwaukee, and again, we live in the northern suburbs, so to drive to O'Hare or to drive to Milwaukee, it's about the same amount of time. If you fly out of Milwaukee, there is no quarantine. So what is the rationale in that? And again, you know, I have, I have made a deliberate choice to not discuss the virus in this group. Um, so some of tonight may be, uh, you know, sort of like a slap in the face for some people because I haven't really discussed my, my feelings on this. But I shared in this mom's Facebook group and I said, you know, I would like to see everyone being more proactive. And again, hence the name of my office. And I said, I would love to see people sharing on Facebook, especially um, their achievements, you know, their healthy habits, that they are drinking more water during this, or that they are engaging in some exercise, or that they are practicing being grateful, even though it's really hard to be grateful these days, or that they're um, minimizing their sugar. So that was my comment. And I can't tell you how many people jumped down my throat and voiced their opinions that how dare I suggest that someone minimize their sugar. And this was from someone that apparently was a cancer survivor. Um, how dare I suggest that someone minimize sugar, that she was offended by that. Um, I had another person tell me that not everyone is healthy, so to suggest that people exercise was offensive. Okay, um, so that made me really think uh, to yesterday's video. So if you haven't watched my video with Sarah on, um, on behavior and neurologically why some people are behaving the way they are right now, please watch that because it was a great, great interview with Dr. Sarah. So I was thinking about those behaviors and then I had a patient that um, was going to start working with me. And for those of you, again, that don't know, um, I do see patients one-on-one -on -one individually for functional medicine, and we also do a group program. So the group program is a year. I resurrected this. I used to do it ages ago. Um, and again, because of Parker, because of life, you know, things kind of went to the wayside, but we're, you know, have, we've resurrected it more recently. So this patient got back to me and said, you know what, I really don't feel like that's what I'm looking for. You know, do you just kind of do like a periodic touch base? Or can I talk to you like every month or maybe, you know, every other month? And I was like, wow, you know, like that's really where, um, you know, where people are. It helps me get a pulse. And it's not like that's wrong, but it gives me a pulse on, on how people are feeling. So I thought tonight we'd talk about behavioral change and when behavioral change takes place and how behavioral change takes place. So I have worked with a variety of chronically ill patients. I have people that, uh, and the majority, and no offense to the men that are watching, but the majority of my clients are women. And you'll notice that I sort of use the term client and patient interchangeably. And honestly, to me, that's because patient has this like negative connotation, like there's something wrong. And for me, a lot of the people that I see, they don't necessarily have a diagnosis. They just want to feel better. They want to experience life. They want vitality. And to me, that's not a patient. So that's why you'll find that I use the terms client and patient interchangeably. So anyway. So I, I do have or have had clients over the years that are um, women that are just looking to lose weight. You know, the women, they've had a couple kids, um, maybe they're sleeping okay, they're active, they're eating clean um, or relatively clean, and they just want to feel better. Or I have had clients on the other end of the spectrum that are suffering with really severe chronic illnesses. They have a rheumatoid arthritis, they have... Um, Sjogren's, where the tips of their fingers turn white, they can't feel them, um, or they have chronic pain, they have fibromyalgia. Now, all of those individuals have the opportunity to fully express health. They have the opportunity to lose the weight, to be able to sleep throughout the night, to have great sex drives, to be just fully, fully expressing this amazing vitality. And, and they aren't, so that's why they're seeking treatment or they're seeking assistance. 
And the client that I um, was talking about most recently that was more looking for like a reboot and just want to touch base once in a while, you know, what, what we offer and the reason that we do year-long programs and the reason, let's take a step back, the reason that Weight Watchers offers lifetime programs is because life ebbs and flows, you know? So I can teach you something and if you're a client and you're seeing me or you're scheduling appointments with me, you know, maybe as you would your primary care where you call up like when you need something or, or acute care, you know, when something goes wrong, your kid has an ear infection or you have sinus congestion and that's when you go see your physician. Um, that's really not how functional medicine works. It's about behavioral change and it's about implementing these lifestyle modifications and it's about creating a life that you want. And if your goal is vitality and longevity and you're seeing your parents age and maybe it's not gracefully, you know, maybe they're suffering with some conditions that you don't want to have to deal with yourself or you're scared of, those are good motivators to make lifestyle modifications, you know, or the opposite. Maybe, you know, I have some clients and their parents passed at a young age or they have, um, you know, chronic heart disease in their family and every man in their family has, hasn't lived to see 55. And maybe that patient that I have is entering his 50s and he wants to blow past that. He wants to see his kids graduate college and he wants to dance with his wife at his 50th wedding anniversary. You know, those are the kinds of things that don't come from, you know, just touching base with me when you're starting to slip down the cliff. And so that's the reason that we make our programs for 12 months at a time. And, you know, making that commitment, it might sound scary, but it's actually very, very reassuring. It's kind of like getting in your car and putting a seatbelt on. You know, does that mean that you're not going to get in a car accident or somebody else isn't going to hit you or you're not going to be distracted and, you know, there's not going to be a problem? No, but it definitely means that you're going to be as protected as you can and you're going to be much more prepared for anything that comes your way. And that's how lifestyle modification turns into a new lifestyle. So if you think of a diet, for instance, and there's definitely a difference between the term diet and meal plan. So, you know, as many of you know, that's where I start with a lot of my clients. You have to eat. You know, I think we can all agree on that. Um, we might as well do it the right way. So... For individuals that have a really specific condition that we're trying to treat, I will definitely put them on some sort of diet. It might be an elimination diet, so we can determine which foods are inflammatory. It might be an anti-candida diet. If they have a yeast overgrowth, we're going to do something really specific. Um, it might be an AIP diet, which is for an anti-inflammatory diet. Now, a lot of the other clients that I see, they're on more of a meal plan, you know, for most of us. And again, not to offend the men that are watching, but the busy women and definitely busy moms, we have a lot on our plate. And that could be a busy pet mom, too, because believe me, taking care of a pet can be as challenging as taking care of a child. Uh, but when we're responsible for other individuals, and that can be, again, an aging parent, it can be a child, it can be a spouse. It can be a job. A lot of us are entrepreneurs and our, our jobs are our babies as well. So when we have a lot on our plate, oftentimes, and this is not meant to be an analogy in that way, but it works out well, uh, what we're eating, there's often not room for on that plate. So it happens last. You know, we go through the drive through We pick something up last minute. We really don't plan. Things just kind of fall into place. So there's not that opportunity to have organization in the vegetables that we're eating or the fruits that we're eating. Are we eating enough colors? Are we getting enough phytonutrients? You know, what's our protein ratio look like? Are we really loading up on carbs? Because eating those carbs make us feel better. They help us to relax. They give us some joy. But are they doing what they need to be doing to our waistline? Probably not. So every single client that we work with receives a personalized diet. And that personalized diet 
could be very benign. It could be things that, you know, maybe that individual is working on minimizing sugar. So their diet's going to not have sugar in it. Or maybe they're working on eliminating dairy, which again, you know, for me across the board, I would like it if everybody was off dairy, but that's not necessarily universal. But it's a very nice place to start. So that's where we work with all of our clients is they get a personalized meal plan so that eating, you don't even have to think about it. You have your recipes done for you. You have what to eat when. If cooking, and for me, this is what I do, but if cooking everything on Sunday works, then you do that and you have your leftovers for certain meals. You know what you're doing. Um, and it's not always picture perfect. I made some really awesome um, meals ahead of time and Parker wasn't interested. I made some really cool breakfasts. Um, and to me, it kind of looked like oatmeal but he wasn't having it so i had to you know i ate that and then i had to actually make breakfast as well um but if you can get a handle on food that's one of the best things you can do as far as lifestyle modification so if you can start that and that becomes your new normal and you're not looking at it as a diet or you're not looking at it as like your quarantine diet or you're trying to get rid of your quarantine 15 uh, that is one of the best things that you can do for yourself and your children is to start with that healthy meal plan. The second thing that I would suggest that you do as far as lifestyle modification is making daily physical activity a part, again, of your routine. Now, that can be that you get up every day and you go for a run or you get up every day and you do a yoga class. And again, this does not have to be outside. It can be taking place literally in your bedroom where you roll out a yoga mat. Um, Parker, obviously, for those of you that have been watching, Jan bought us a Peloton and I have been using the Peloton every day since we got it. I've done like 50 rides. And Parker will now say, mommy, are you gonna ride this morning? And so he knows that that's what I do. That's my routine. And that's my goal is to get him out doing activities, out walking, so that that's not something new. That's what we do. That's your body was designed to move. So that's what we do. We get out and move. So that would be my second recommendation to you. If you are working on lifestyle modifications, that you start, start doing activity and that is part of your everyday movement. And again, these changes are going to ebb and flow over time. But I will ask that you have, whether it's an accountability partner, which is a friend, you have a, a group that you're a part of, or you have, you know, whether it's a coach or a physician that you work with, um, there should be somebody that helps to keep you on track. You know, I, um, tomorrow is actually my birthday, so we're going to do probably a video uh, early in the morning on accountability partners. It's uh, related to a blog that I wrote on what your functional medicine team should look like. And I will tell you that I've shared with you some of those people that are on my team, but it is so, so important to have people that are keeping you account accountable because it is so easy to slip and again, I mean, obviously take the worldwide pandemic out of it and just normal everyday circumstances and normal everyday life. We are all different and the amount of stress that we can tolerate before some of our good habits start to crumble is very different for everyone. But having those people that draw you back to that, those good habits and whether that's a friend that says, hey, we're going to go for a run or a friend that says, you know, hey, how you been eating? Are you drinking your water? You know, what's going on? Somebody that touches base, you know, or your coach. And again, whether that's a life coach or a nutrition coach or, who, or a psychiatrist, whoever it might be. But somebody that touches base and says, you know, how are your daily thoughts? How are you feeling? You know, what's going on? Where do we need to make some tweaks? Having an accountability partner is an absolute necessity. So we'll cover some of those things tomorrow morning. And then finally, of course, you know, obviously this was leading into mental health, but, you know, I have, we don't have a TV at home, so I don't watch the news. So I unfortunately get a lot of my news from scrolling through Facebook, but I will tell you, you know, from what I've seen and whether it is, you know, wounded veterans that are caught up in a uh, exacerbation of PTSD 
from the current stay at home orders or it's kids that are overwhelmed by the lack of social connection right now. We are in a very, very trying time when it comes to mental health. And it is all of our responsibility to take care of one another. Um, because if we look at ourselves as a society, a society is not made up of a bunch of individuals that are um, isolated from one another. A society is one that takes care of one another. And so my ask for you, you know, I, I kind of threw this out as a joke when all of this first started, you know, find a card that you've got around the house and send it to somebody. But I'm going to make it one step easier, you know, send a text to a friend. So literally like pull out your phone right now and send a message. And it doesn't need to be to somebody that, you know, it's even better if it's somebody that you haven't talked to in a while because you don't know. Um, you don't know how they're doing. And please do not uh, make any assumptions based on what you see on Facebook because I will tell you that probably um, greater than 80% of what you see on social media is bullshit um, because people are not sharing when they're trying. They're not sharing when they're hurting. They're not doing Facebook Lives when their faces look like this. I'll tell you that right now, most of them. So reach out to somebody and see how they're feeling and what they need. Um, and don't ask, do you need anything? Ask what you need. Because it's very, very easy, especially as a woman, to say I'm fine. To say, you know, it's all, all, it's all good. Um, but if you say, what do you need? What can I do? Um, you're more likely to get an honest answer. So that's my one ask of you today. You know, it's not too late. Send a message. At least in Chicago, it's 815. So if you're in the United States right now, you can send this message. And please remember that, you know, my goal in doing these videos and spreading this information is to be a resource and to be of help. So if you have something that has worked for you, please share it in this group. If you have seen something motivational on Facebook, please feel free to share it in the group. If you have a challenge that you would like an answer to, you can always send me a message and I'm happy to answer you privately. I'm happy to share it with the group anonymously, but I would love to be of help. You know, if doing something, if you need accountability, send me a message. If you want to do, do one of our annual programs, you know, we're starting another round of people in June. And I can tell you that I, I have people that I did this with God, like 12 years ago. And when we started talking about cutting out dairy or cutting out gluten, at least they were honest with me and they told me I was crazy. And I can tell you now that, you know, 10 years later, I, I still get, you know, whether it's an email from a patient or if it's still people that I see in the office tell me, you know what? I gave up my Diet Coke or you know what? I gave up that dairy and I, I feel better. I'm not getting my sinus infections. I don't have those headaches. And it's not so much about those symptoms that they can track, but for me, it's knowing that I'm giving them a few more days with a parent or I'm giving them, you know, a few more opportunities with their kids. And that's what making these changes is about. So I hope that, you know, that some of, of what I've taught you're able to implement. Excuse me. And even if you are not seeing, you know, please don't take a multivitamin and expect it to be like the heavens open up and, you know, and you're feeling amazing, you know. You're taking that multivitamin so that you don't get cancer. You're taking that multivitamin so that you don't have heart disease. Um, you're not taking it to like get rid of your ankle pain. Thanks, Christy, you're amazing too. 
So please don't start on this path of, of some of what I've been teaching and you know do it for a couple months and not necessarily think that you're noticing a change and um, think I'm full of BS because the real change comes you know 20 years down the line when you're still here and if you do a little bit of that that would be fantastic and I love how you are passionate and compassionate as well my friend um, thank you, Chrissy. Yeah, I actually, and it's kind of funny that you say that because I ran into, um, actually one of our viewers, one of our members in the park today, um, who only recognized me because she heard, um, Parker running away from me. She heard Parker's voice. So she recognized him from the videos, but, um, we talked about how it can be really challenging because everybody has their own paradigm and that's okay. So you know, I'm kind of assuming that the people that are watching this, the people that have stuck it out, you know, I think we're over like 500 members now, but the people that are here get it and, you know, are like picking up what I'm laying down. You know, this is your, this is your thing. You know, this is your tribe. I don't think that people are watching this and saying that I'm full of BS. And if you are, I would love it. Please post a comment and we'll, and we'll have a conversation. We'll have a cup of coffee live. Um, but it is challenging for me um, to have so much passion for what I do and so much excitement for health um, and literally want to be like Mother Teresa and, and lift everybody up and have everybody be healthy. But I can't make those decisions for people. I can't... Um, you know, swipe the McDonald's, you know, out of people's uh, mouth. Um, I can't stop people from, um, you know, sitting on their couch with a glass of wine and think that, that quarantine is a time for like super Netflix and chill. You know, if, if people really are, and again, let's take politics out of it. Let's take um, agendas out of it. If this virus really is um, what the the media and um, everyone will have us believe that it is, then we need as a society some direction on um, implementation of prevention. Because for me, you know, aside from the functional medicine organizations that I'm a part of, I haven't seen that anywhere. I haven't seen anywhere in the mainstream media where, um, you know, again, at least in Chicago, you know, every, every day at two o'clock is when Pritzker has his, um, update and they're talking about masks and they're talking about staying home and they're talking about, um, staying six feet away from ourselves. You know, where are the suggestions on boosting the immune system? Because we are not. Um, you know, like these frail little flowers that, that everyone will have you, like, lead you to believe. Um, you know, your body is strong and you have this power within you. And, and we all have this incredible immune system that protects us every single day from viruses, from bacteria, from parasites, from things that we are aware of. And I will tell you right now, there are tons of things that we don't even know that are attacking us every single day. And you know what that amazing body does that, that you are sitting in right now? It protects you, whether your door is open or your door is closed, whether you have a mask on or you don't, your immune system is fighting for you 24 seven. So I would suggest, whether you're getting your information from me or you're doing your own research, but that you continue to do things that feed that immune system. You know, we need to be doing all of these healthy emotions. We need to be minimizing sugar. We need to be moving our bodies. And the contrary is going to decrease our immune system. And I don't expect everybody to be doing these things 24-7. I don't expect everybody to be at 100%. 
Um, but I will tell you right now that the thing that's going to get th you through this, and, and I don't mean, you know, the, um, the virus right now, but the thing that's going to get you through this thing called life is trusting in the strength of, of your body and feeding it healthy things. And by feeding, I don't just mean eating and finding resources and surrounding yourself with those people that build you up and are supportive. So if you have questions, and this went on a little bit longer than I thought, but thank you for a handful of you for participating, Christy. And if there's, again, anything I can answer, please reach out. Um, if you want to discuss something within the group, start your own conversation. This is what this is for. This tribe is yours. So I love you. Thank you for tuning in. Have a beautiful Saturday. Tomorrow morning, um, I may be wearing a It's My Birthday Crown as we do our video in the morning. And let's pray that my face is a little bit better. I know Christy was on here for a second. Um, this is her fault. She provided me with the supplies. Um, I love you all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Take care of yourselves. I love that everybody's proactive. I will see you tomorrow. Good night.